Vet Finder is happy to present as part of our Vet Finder Focus series our rap session today with the founder of Soka Tribe. For those of you who are not familiar with Soka Tribe, you'll learn a little bit now, but it's a very popular group and organization here in the DMV area that is making its name known worldwide. And we're sitting here today with the founder, Shamika Farquhar, and we're just gonna have a few minutes where you'll learn about Soka Tribe, you'll learn about Shamika's background, as well as her life in the carnival and Caribbean culture scene. So, thank you for taking the time to sit with us today. Of course, I'm really excited. And thank you for saying my name right. I was like, oh, she said it right. <laughs> you don't understand the butchering that goes on. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. I make a note to make sure oh, anybody, that's the most important thing. Most people know that like, you want to get the name right because if you mess that up, you kind of mess up the, the whole relationship. It's just like, mm, mm, okay, okay. <laughs> But yes, um, really excited. As mentioned, I am the founder of Soka Tribe. Uh, we are a gateway community to the carnival culture. And what that means is we connect with audiences through a variety of ways. So I say our most popular entry point is where we really started to first make our name is a dance fitness class. It's really easy to get people involved in fitness because no one has that barrier of I don't belong here because it's a fitness class. So I just showed up. But what we do is we like to put some culture into the aspects of the way we deliver that uh, fitness experience. So Soka Tribe, the dance class is one where we connect with audiences. We also have the Soka Tribe Convoy. Um, shout out to our community group of performers. So the Soka Tribe Convoy, you'll find us at the Fun Parade. You've seen us on Kennedy Center. Um, we have essentially made our name for bringing folks who are born into the Caribbean culture, as well as those that the Caribbean culture has opened has welcomed with open arms. I'm really excited about the convoy and we also do entertainment. So we have programming for children as well as exposing them to the carnival culture, to the just the richness of the history and the background, it's, whether it be through movement and dance or through the actual like historic um, events and cultural things that have happened in the past. And lastly, and I would say, I mean, all that stuff is great. But Trinidad Carnival will clearly change your life. And so once a year, the tribe does coordinate a group trip to the greatest show on earth. The greatest. Uh, the greatest. The greatest. No slight to all the others. But no slight to no. You know, every, everything is different. But the greatest is the greatest. So <laughs> uh, every year, so the tribe does do a group trip to Trinidad and Tobago Carnival. And so really excited to be kicking that off. So how did Soka Tribe come about? Okay. Um... Honestly, and I always tell people, it was, it was, Soka Tribe was born out of my Tabanka for home. Um, so I'm going to use, I know a lot of Fet Finders may not be of uh, Caribbean culture, so I'm going to explain what Tabanka is. Tabanka is literally a homesickness or a, learning, uh, a longing for home, right? So I came to D.C. in just barely over the 30-something, right? And it's really different when you come to a new city at that age range because I feel like I'm an extroverted person as well. Um, so it's like, I love my people. I love to be in these spaces. And I was actually coming back to D.C. I went to undergrad here. So in my head, I'm remembering D.C. with college. And it was just that feel. Of course, I didn't expect coming back decades later to be the same. But just this idea of familiarity. However, D.C. has done a lot of change yes. since I went to college. That's one. And two, just as a person, I'm different. And I was different. Like, I'm different now than when I started Soka Tribe five years ago, first of all. Like, I didn't even know that I would get here. But back to the origin story, I was homeless. Like, I just missed home. And it's really hard to connect with people at this age. Like, I'm just going to be honest. Like, especially in a city like D.C., I, when I first came to D.C., I was so concerned about, like, I'm not political. We're, we're going we're gonna to talk about this commission this later. But I'm not political. I don't care about that. How am I going to connect with people, right? And everything was like, well, where do you work? And who do you work for? Who do, I you actually, know? <laughs> who do you know? What are you doing? And I actually came to D.C. to open a charter school. And I was the only person in my organization here. So I had to find set up. So there's like, I had no coworkers. There was no, oh, we're going to do this. So it was like, I'm new in this new city doing this new thing. And it's just like, I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. um, so like, okay, we're going to try dance fitness. Again, like low barrier to entry. Like I've been dancing since I was four. And... My memories of carnival start really young. I started, I've been playing mass as well as since I was four. So it's like that year, like that. You know what I mean? It was like, we're going to get into this. And I just remember carnival always being such a community, like, 
bring together experience. Like my dad is a workaholic as they come. My mama had her nine to five, but every summer we were in that mass camp. We making this from noon to morning. Like he's doing the day job, she's doing her day job. They come in and it's like the family and the extended family and all the extra cousins and pumpkin vine. And then we would all come together around carnival. And then Labor Day every year, that was like our thing. You know what I mean? And so in starting to teach, it was like, I felt the need to tell people about, like little things about carnival. And it's just like this, okay, it started to catch on. And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm good at this. And then I took it on the road and I was like, I'm going to, I went back to Brooklyn and like people saw what I was doing in DC, like, oh, you gotta do it here, sure. So it was a different homecoming experience to do what I start. I created here to create a space. But my focus was like, oh, bring it here. Cool, we try it there. And then what I really started to see is Soka Tribe, and this is why we call it a gateway community and not a fitness class. Mm -hmm. I went to Denver. They were people that had been in Denver for years and not had access or understood where to find us, so to speak. And that's just something extremely powerful. Like, that was my first time ever being there. And I threw up the class and I'm doing my promotions, et cetera, et cetera. And people came out and then they found each other. And mind you, I've not taught a class in Denver since then, but those people will now have each other. And like, there's just something so powerful in creating a space for people to be and not be worried about what do you do? And like, how can you help me? It's like, we're just here mm -hmm. enjoying this, this carnival like experience. And so that's why I started. I'm gonna stop there because there's, there's, there's a level. And you know, then the performing group came, we tried different things and I like, I want to give more. I want to reach. It's important like to keep the culture going and to educate people about it because we we live in a consumeristic capitalistic society and it's like people are changing these dollars and that's cool but i know why it's so important to me because i came up in it right. i mean i grew up in brooklyn we had a really strong caribbean community because i was talking like i didn't realize how trinidadian i was until i left because i'm like oh that's not normal you can't get roti on every <laughs> I'm part of Brooklyn because I'm in Brooklyn. Uh, so. I was uh, born in Crown Heights, lived in Flavish and back to Crown Heights. Okay. So I, I kind of claim both of them, right? Okay. Um, so it's just a, I thought that was normal. It wasn't. And that's okay. But what about the parents here who don't have it? Right. And so then I started meeting more people who are either having small children, who are like, so if, you know, when I have children, if one, <laughs> put all the praises out there, right? Where are they going to go? Where's their space? How will they learn it, right? And we start to lose things. Right. So that's when I started to think about, okay, well, we need to figure out how we can create something in a space for people to bring their children. Like, I have a couple of folks who come to dance class, and they, you know, they bring the little girls, and it's just like, this is adorable. But, like, now you see the, the ones that come consistently, like, they have a little move, and, like, the whole class is just like, but they're going to have a different appreciation for this culture because it's something that I always remember that I did with my mom when I was younger. Okay. Or like, this is something that's important or it's fun versus they don't get to see it. They don't get any exposure. And like, that's where like Super Transmission is. Like, let the world know about Carnival. It's rich culture. Keep it alive. Because we do have people who are like, all right, well, I'm just trying to go viral. So I'm going to do this thing and this is what's going to happen. And that's cool for now. But at the end of the day, like, you do it here, you do it there, and then like, where is what literally our ancestors fought for to have the right and privilege to do carnival? And I'm just like, so we out here fighting a good fight. We'll see what happens. So now talking about promoting the culture, because Betfinder is focused on exposing Caribbean culture to folks of Caribbean descent, mm -hmm. as well as to the Americans, Europeans, whatever. How with with your Convoy with the classes, seeing how you are, you're from Trinidad and the mm -hmm. Is most of your focus around Trinidad culture, or are there other islands that you bring in, and how do you go about educating the groups? So I will say expertise in Trinidad, right? Um, in terms of a bit more of my heritage. So my maternal grandmother is from Barbados, from Barbados, and my paternal grandmother is from Antigua. So like, but it just so happened that my parents are born in Trinidad and that, right. that's what, you know what I mean? So in terms of exposure, I can only speak to what I know. Um, we had a petition dancer come. So Illy, who's based in Brooklyn, New York, um, Illy did a dance class. Like I'm open to these things. 
we had Betty Rocks, who's based in LA. Mm -hmm. um, she's Belizean, but she's a dance hall mattress. So it's like, Betty, come in and do this. I am not going to claim to be the expert of all things. And so therefore, to me, it's like, who's the expert? Who can I bring in? Who can share this part of them with us? Because for me, it goes back to authenticity and quality. Because how else do we maintain if it doesn't have the depth that it needs to? You know what I mean? Um, I have, like, I've recently met artists who've done, like, a lot more codification of our culture. And I'm like, I would love. So I'm just like, look, when, when does windfall come? When? See, I'm claiming it. When does windfall come? We can put them on a bigger platform. Because what I realize is that I've been marrying my, like, consulting, marketing background, business acumen with what I know of arts and culture, right? And so that's allowed Soka Tribe to be, like, be on a megaphone platform. Right. But I also know I can like, the culture thing is just always something that they put that in me a long time, but I spent most of my adult career in this business. This is how we're going to make these things happen. This is how we're trying to be sustainable, how we're trying to make things make sense, why we need to... And a lot of the artists didn't have that luxury, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how do I partner or make it make sense for everybody so that we can take our things to a larger larger scale? In terms of something that has an interesting info that I don't think a lot of people know, um, the Soka Tribe Convoy got that name because in Guadalupe, mass bands were called convoys. So in there, like I discovered that when I went to visit and I was in their slave museum and I'm looking at the costumes, I'm just like, oh my gosh, these look like just like the ones that I see in, Car um, in Trinidad. And just really understanding the overlapping of the cultures. And that's what I took away from them. I was like, this is, I was like, I need a name. This was going to be a convoy because this idea of a group of people brought together, but with an influence in something that's more historic. You know what I mean? And it's just like these little things that I try to share as much as possible. But then again, we're in also in the day of people got a 12 second attention span. True. And it's like, we got to do all we can. So like in class, you're going to learn about road march. You're going to learn about your own partner. This is what's happening. And it's like, but you walk away and you get some of it. You know that there's a composition. You know this is a way that like great artists find the foreground. But I've also, you know, sweated off my 500, 600 calories because that's what you came for. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of blending those things together. Um, another point that's been a recent personal professional because it's all mixed up together at this point in time journey is uh two years ago I founded the return to the reason festival so kind of I was in my second and a half year of Soka tribe and I'm applying for grants and what really started it, I think it was actually that trip to Guadalupe that that prompted this because I was looking at the costumes mm -hmm. and it was just like yes it, you know it's French Caribbean however the similarities had more to, to me it was just like everybody wanted to say that carnival was just something we got from the french and i'm just like okay right like that's the first thing that everyone always wants to say and to me it was just like i yes i'll accept the timing right i'll accept you know the the practice of festivities but there is just so much so so i'm so black <laughs> about how we celebrate, how we move, and all that other stuff. I'm like, why don't we ever talk about that? Mm -hmm. And so with the Return to the Reason Festival, my goal, because you know, there, there's a goal and a vision, and then you start executing, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Someone please give me back my edges. I really love that. <laughs> um, but the goal was to connect our Caribbean carnival heritage to its African roots via dance. Mm -hmm. And then, like, trying to have these questions about that. And I was just, like, blown away. And there's been so much evolution in terms of we take from this, we take from that. This looks like this. This used to be this. This is slightly. Because as an art form, like, we are just such an expressive people. We don't, not that we don't have a movement vocabulary, because that's not what, that's not it. Mm -hmm. It is just so individual the way you put you know your own flavor on things and we encourage that that creative that we have that that, that why we are the forefront of all things cultural it's because it's just us right what you then lose however is the tondu is the tondu and that's a ballet term the plie is the plie the degage is the degage this is codification this is 
codification turns to monetization, turns to popularity, turns to business, turns to exposure, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about it from that perspective, there, there are very clear lines. But what we do, I can't say if I borrowed out from she or she or this or that. And it just, you know, I, I, I hate the argument or tension when you have African and Caribbean mm -hmm. and oh you were doing you yes, know dance. African dance to, to soca music and you know this and it's just like wait what but we're connected and we're influenced together and we, we come from the same place and so it's so internally driven you know what I mean mm -hmm. and so in return to reason that's kind of where I came back I came back I was like all right like so we are all we we, we it, it's, it's there it's, just it's right. there and what was the most prevalent lesson was it's actually about the music and the drums. So the storytelling aspect of carnival, like that is, that is where like this, this spirit of the griots and the like, this is how we're communicating. And I always tell people like, in when we were enslaved in the United States, oh, go down by the river Moses, cause we got to be out. Like <laughs> this is, this, this idea of music being, the message being the message and the transcending right because masquerade and carnival was about telling a story mm -hmm. and this all of this like people don't talk about it it's oh i'll do what i go and i'm okay with that please go bend over and brook out but just understand there's so much more that drives this you know what i mean like and so just just again going through that process that first year that's what it was um year two of the festival it was like okay we did it once we know that the the, the, stum, the, the, stums, the story and the drums are really what I would say our African culture really pushed through carnival. And as the they, oppressors, took away our ability to take away our drums, we're going to have tambu bamboo, take that away, we're going to invent steel pan. And we continue to form ways of resistance, musically, mm -hmm. storytelling-wise, and the masquerades are just like a layer on top of that. It's kind of very much like you think you know what's going on, but actually... You know what I mean? Um, just our ability to create safe spaces for ourselves through that. Create moments of sanity. Like, can you imagine? Like, it, it's just, it's so, it's so beautiful and amazing. But people don't know. Right. And so it's like, because we're, it's not in 12 second groups, right? It's not. But if I can get you in that class, and I can get you dancing, and it's like, oh, now I'm going to have the convoy. And now you're one more person that's out there like, this is what this is about. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a thing. So talking to, about carnival, just in general, you say how in your classes you try, because people's attention span is mm -hmm. so, are so short, rather, you try to give the bits and snippets here and there. With that finders, as we mentioned earlier, there are some people of Caribbean descent mm -hmm. that we're trying to inform about things going on in the culture, but there are a lot of newcomers to Carnival, mm -hmm. to the Caribbean scene that are just learning about soca or bashment or whatever. So like in our site, which I hope you all visit, we will have a Carnival 101 section where we're trying to inform them of the history. So two minutes, give a brief summary because not everybody wants to read. People so don't want to read. Give a brief okay. historical a teaching you, lesson as top, far as top. what carnival top. was about. Okay. And you can speak from Trinidad, like we say, that's the greatest carnival of all. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> we need you to know from here. Yes. But okay. at least give that brief history as far as where it came from, what was the purpose with mass, with the storytelling. Got it. Okay, I'm going to do top line. Yes. Maybe. Excuse me if I miss some things. Okay, so uh, we were colonized by the French, um, and during, they follow the lentil calendar, so we're going to start with the timing of the celebration, right? So imagine your days and nights are spent working, right? During the Lenten season, prior to it beginning, they had their two, two days, Monday and Tuesday, and it's all about festivities and celebrations before the somber time, right? They are partying, y'all get to party. Great. So we're outside, we're kicking it. We're also now imitating... <laughs> What they're doing, right? So that's where you have traditional car carnival characters, for example, like the Dameron, that's one with the really large bosom and all the all, all her assets are extra. Um, and that's literally making fun of those folks on the inside, right? But we're also doing this now with our drums because that's something that we have brought over with. That's a tradition that we have maintained. Um, Dameron and her whole crew, they've got their own things. We have things like the Jumbies, right? So the idea of the Moko Jumbies, which... Uh, it is a person walking on stilts, um, in, I'm, why is this game right now, but 
the idea that the Moko Jambu is actually a deity looking over everyone, right? So I'm going to try to throw in some of the traditional characters and what they mean, just in terms of that you see or understand that so many African influences that are on the carnival culture, because people are quick to be like, oh, it was a French thing. Mm-hmm. However, this is, these are the things that we're seeing. This idea of a griot, so someone who's actually telling the story, right? So now we've got these drums, we've got these characters, storytelling. In the... Um, 1800s, there were the Cambouillet riots. The idea that carnival and these large festivities also became a time when there was an integration across society. So you're thinking about social stratospheres, color stratospheres. It's just like, there's a whole lot of blending going on. We need to shut this down. Y'all gonna stop these drums? Shut your party done. Guess what happened? Call it that time where across society, everybody united and there literally was riots. Like bloody riots in the streets. Um... Because they tried to shut because it down. Because they tried to shut it down. And what's interesting to that is like they were saying it was getting too wild, we need to shut it down. But the fact that the pressure from society as an entirety wanted this is what caused the riots. A lot of people got hurt and it was like, you know what, actually we're probably not gonna shut this down. Because here's the thing about it. Everybody was for it. If it had just been from the bottom causing that fight, it'd have been a different story because we'd all been locked up. We've seen where that how it happens, right? But the people in power tend to tell the stories and shift things. So it's really also important to think about that unifying aspect of culture, right? It is about unity, it's about bringing everybody together to, for, for a commonality, which the commonality now is enjoyment and freedom and celebration, which is great. Pushing the story forward. Drums are now outlawed. There's a new inve- home invention, but an alternative, right? Because we are a percussive people, because the percussion over the songs, back to the messages and the storytelling called the tambu bamboo. So you're thinking bamboo stilts hollowed out you pound them down so it has a unique sound. So between the clapping this, and there's also dancing that goes with that. Then you add on stick fighting. So again, we're having these moments of entertainment and breaks during the season. Fast forwarding. Y'all are still making too much noise. We don't like all the Italian story. Shut this down. And then you have the only instrument. <laughs> that really matters. <laughs> that really matters. <laughs> you know, you can play playing at every, anything. But the steel pan was invented in the hills of Lavendale in Trinidad and Tobago. Because guess what? We need the rhythm. And like, that's just what we have, right? So steel pan is the original soundtrack to the road, right? The road used to go a lot slower. So now you're thinking you have your fancy sailors because we are now imitating those French sailors that came in. It's a whole lot of, y'all have been on this great show, but actually we're like, you know, y'all a whole bunch of bleep, bleep, bleep. And so this idea that we are celebrating our freedom while making fun of people who tried to hold us down, it, 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 there's so many like, things that people just don't get, right? Um... So we got the slow, you know, soundtrack to the road. We now have bands that actually have large sets of these characters. The themes are going through that. Exactly. People, it, it's a show. Think about the parade as a show, the processions, etc. So, um, so just drive in real quick. For those who do go to Trinidad Carnival, if you want to see what that traditional mass is like, then you go to the festivities on like Carnival Saturday, that Sunday. Yep, Demonstra. Exactly, because then you'll see those characters. You'll see Panorama. You can go to the pan finals and see the steel pan competitions. But going back. Okay. Right, so you have that. And then you have, again, like I said, the evolution of music has really pushed the evolution of Carnival and what it looks like, right? You have then, you know, Lord Charity and Soka comes. Yes. So Soka's grandfather is Calypso. It is definitely, for those of my reggae folks, right, I always compare conscious reggae and dance hall to Cal- Soka and Calypso, Calypso because yes. Calypso is telling a story. It is about, because you look at, listen to old Calypso and sometimes it's like, oh, you sound like you're just talking and there's music, but you're, you're talking and that's okay because it was also a form of resistance, a form it of was. sharing a story. It's a like, lot of it was political. It's so political. The double and There was no jump, jumping up on somebody. It was talking because about. That's what Soka is for. Exactly. Right? And so this idea that, yes, you know, I would say our parents are doing that, but we need something more. We want something for the people. The steel pan is great, but let's add this layer on. So now you have the invention of Soka. Soka, take, just thinking about what music, it, again, going back to the unifying aspect of Carnival, you've got East Indian influence in there. You've got... You've got the West African influence in there. You've got funk and jazz, because that's what was popular in the U.S. at this time. So it's really pulling things from everything. And we on this road. Jump, wave, jam. Jump, wave, jam. <laughs> so when you listen to soca music and you wonder why they say jump, okay. wave, jam, because this music was intended, right, with its cadence for you to jump, wave, and jam. It is about celebration, and that's why, it, that, that, is, that, that is its core, that's its essence. 
Yes, somebody will get horned, which means cheated on, um, in a soca song, but guess what? Then they go and jump, wave, and jam anyway. And it's, it's this idea of life is happening, but here we are in this moment, let's take it, right? And that, that this moment, let's enjoy it, let's be here, let's be present, is something I always try to bring back to Soka Tribe, right? Like, mm-hmm. with everything that we do, when you're here with us, let's, let's, let's have that space, you know what I mean? Um, DJ, Soka's DJs, faster, costumes been getting smaller, <laughs> history been disappearing, and we just out here. Full but stop. We wanted to give you at least some a brief. Brief. I, tr- I tried to. No, you did. It. You wrapped it up really quick. <laughs> but definitely, whether it's Trinidad Carnival, whether it's any other island, you definitely want to try to learn what the history is. And, that's and they're different. Exactly. Each carnival is different. So different. So, thank you. Yep. So, you mentioned earlier, as part of the whole Soka Tribe experience, that you do an annual trip with the group to Trinidad Carnival. So, for someone who is brand new to the carnival scene, what should they expect? How should they best prepare to get ready physically, mentally, emotionally? What should they expect to see? How how can I come and not be overwhelmed? So... It's a hard question because everybody starts from someplace different. And the, the, the consultant in me is like, do a gap analysis. I don't know where you start, so I'm going to try to tell you where you need to get to. But what I will say is information is power. Um, and you want to get valuable information, right? So top bloggers, Ting's Nice, um, Global Carnivalista, Bahami, Bahamianista, uh, Google Trinidad Carnival blog. And you will find things. There is Trinidad Carnival Diaries. Remember when I was just a teeny bitty site? The joint's blown up. True. Like, there's, like, you probably going to just check out Fet Finder. They'll probably have links to all these places. Yes. Right? And so, with that said, you want to get all the information. And understand where you are. Right? Because there are so many different aspects of Carnival. Carnival can be a, I am having a passive experience. But the energy around me is so high. You do not have to go to every fet. You do not have to play mass. Either. You do not have to play mass. But let me tell you, I don't know why you would do that. But I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just I'm, I'm, I'm being real, right? Like, it, here's the thing. You you decide some things. Like, okay, if I'm a person that, like, crowd, here's a very real thing. Mental health is, a, is, is true. Crowds, anxiety, like, just literally getting overwhelmed. Take care of yourself. If you know. Too many people makes your heart pop. We don't have, look, we don't talk to no load. What does that mean? If you fall down, <laughs> this is where you hit the keys to the car. So See you, you later. <laughs> you wanna, all right, that, that, that is a general rule. Harsh, but. That's a general rule. If you come to Soka Tribe Ship, we will make sure that you are escorted back to the van, but then you have to stay from it. Joking, we'll send you back to the hotel. But. <laughs> The, po- the point is, you really want to understand yourself and what kind of experience you're looking for. If you want to, I want it all experience, my best advice is sign up to be with somebody who has done it all and knows how to guide you. Sokatribe.life. Um, <laughs> if you, do- you want to dabble in and out, say, okay, I like wildness. So there's something called a juve fet. The juve fet is, it, you're getting paint, powder, chocolate, mud. You can probably go to at least two or three of those before the actual juve event. If that's what you want to do, find that based on one of these blogs or the fet finder links, right? Buy your tickets, organize, and you go, right? Mm-hmm. If you know, I look, I have a cousin. She's been going to carnival plenty, plenty decades now. She don't do dirty at all. But every fly fed, dressed to the um, nine. Too. Look, nice she, she's at the line. <laughs> she's at Bell. She's, she's at Sunrise. Oh, this is like, they're going to have great drinks and food. And look, and she's fine with her two-step wine. And it's sweet as ever. But that's right. what she wants. Self-awareness. Don't think that your carnival experience needs to be my carnival experience. needs to be her carnival experience. Because exactly. carnival is about individual freedom. And getting what you need. You know what I mean? Exactly. If you want to, like, I like to do, uh, I want a juve. I want to get fly. Because it's, it's, it's nothing like a good day. I want to get fly. And there's a fact where I'm like, you know, I just want to be a little wassy. Wassy, yeah. um, ratchet, uh, <laughs> looser. Get on I, I want to get on bad. Leave my behavior at home. And so I build that into a trip. So that I can do all the things. Mm-hmm. And move on to the next thing. You know what I mean? Like that, 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 again, 
understand yourself and make a trip that makes sense for you. Be safe, right? So my ladies specifically, right? Understand your surroundings, like anywhere you're going, you want to know your surroundings. There's going to be a lot of alcohol and there's, there's a lot of temptation. I'm just leaving it at that. There's a lot of, there are so many things, there's so many things. Right. Carnival is visual overlay. Yeah, I know insane. everybody that fake my <laughs> is woman. Hello. My whole warm heart, right? <laughs> my whole warm heart, right? There's so, there's so, there's so many, I mean, we've seen carnival love stories. Yes. Like just, just roll out. With that being said, everybody is not going to be your future husband. So you don't just need to be like, I'm going to risk it all. All the time. Like, be easy. And my gentlemen, don't get got. Don't get got. Like, it's real. Like, cute face, pretty waist, and this just, I'm going down these dark alleys into these weird neighborhoods that look, you probably shouldn't. And so, like, anywhere else, be mindful of your surroundings. Prep uh, your suitcases based on the fest that you want to go to. Comfortable footwear is a must because if your toe bang up, you can, you can jam. And that, like when they say jump, wine, jam, we're not talking about your pinky toe. So, no. Oh, and we have a checklist on foot binders so that way you know what to pack. Done. Um, so I think that's, that's it for newbies. Understanding where you are. Get your information. Know where you are. Figure out what kind of experience you want to have. And, and go for it because it's there. We are here for you. Exactly. Carnival will welcome you. Open up. <laughs> so with your Soka Tribe class, I've had the privilege of seeing you guys perform at the embassies around DC and at uh, your anniversaries and things like that. And Thank you for your support. Always... I appreciate all that. Like, literally, I appreciate it. I'll oh, be... No, it's always a lot of fun. The way the crowd gets involved and part of it is just you yourself being as, like you said, the extrovert and just exciting and exuberant, but also the music. So Listen. in the classes, at your parties and events, who, and I mean, I know you don't want to play favorites, but what are some of your favorites? Who are some of my your default. favorites? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with my, 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 my defaults, right? So Actually, we'll do two. Who are some of your favorite DJs? And then who are some of your favorite artists? Oh, so okay. we'll start with DJs. Mm -hmm. We'll start with DJs. So close connection. Uh, <laughs> no, not going to lie. Like. You don't like so good and what you're doing here. I know that's not them, but it's on this mix that I played so hard. Because it's just like, I'm having a bad day. We're going to hold on to this. Um, I also love... Oh, the, Close Connection. Close Connection. Based out of New York. And then there's DJ Joe. Love his mixes. And I want to say something unique that stood out to me is he plays things that you don't hear everywhere else. For example, and I'm this example is long. Rough, rough times. Right? And I'm listening to this mix and this song comes on, Soka Saves My Life. And I was just like... <laughs> running, crying in these DC streets because it's like I feel that mm -hmm. and I would not have heard that because I'm here and I'll, I'll be honest like I'm an entrepreneur so I'm constantly working on something but he played that song it was in the mix it stuck with me and then when I was doing the Return to the Reason Festival in Ghana guess what song I got them to play on the radio in Ghana which is Destra's Soka Saved My Life Destra the Queen of Bacchanal known all, from Trinidad. I was like known all over the world all over the Caribbean I would say definitely like she has a presence all over the world but what I found in speaking with our Ghanaian part, counterparts like they they loved it when they heard it but they're not getting it right um so that's one of the reasons I appreciate uh DJ, DJ Joe. Joe um also based out of New York <laughs> I'm starting to hear uh, uh, You know, and, and you know what? And again, but this is, this is, I got something to, there, there, there's a reason here, right? Okay. So then, um, and lastly, Damien Ducal. Yes. Right? They're not based. They're not out of face. They're, they're not, not based, based out of New York. See, see. Yeah, they're not. Super. But they're based. Trinidad and Tobago. Exactly. Oh, look, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am who I am. But, um, what I love about them is that I just be grooving. Oh, have you, uh, for those who have not heard them, they have the greatest gym workout mixes that they do, by the way. And so, and that's, that's kind of like how I get caught into it, because it's like, I'm like, what do I need that's going to keep me going? Um, so all of those DJs are amazing. I say, we, we, this is a non soca DJ, but I'm going to- That's fine. I'm going to shout out. Doesn't have to be. DJ Woomies, it was, uh, I haven't listened to the, the entirety of the, the most recent one, but the, the, that whole Afro beats, soca. I do love my Afro soca loving folks, and so I gotta gotta shout gotta shout the homie out on that because I mean 
I mean, you know, the, well, that's the funny part. It's like you sometimes will go to a set and some people can't dif- differentiate between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, no, this isn't, this is, this is not Soka. like, wait, this isn't Soka. <laughs> like, no, no, this, this is not Soka. Um, when we were in Ghana, we did a co-choreographed piece for this year. So th- that's why I said this year was very different. Like the co-choreographed piece was like next level. We took time with the artist and we danced to Whole Place, which is Bungie and um, Fuse. So it's like, this whole Caribbean Afro mixing thing and really, you know, I, again, moving, we're moving, I, I, I think, you know, it feels good. You know you think like, you're like, this is scary, but it feels good, so. Okay, so we named the DJs, artists. Voice is lyrics, we speak into my soul. And he has a beautiful tone, but okay. And he <laughs> from Sawa, so. <laughs> I'm just, okay, honestly, uh, lyrically, I think, as I mentioned the song before, or the, the lyrics spoke to me. Yes, jump, wine, jam, but it's something about like the melody of stuff that makes you feel good. And so when you can listen to it, mm-hmm. and like you feel these warm, fuzzy feelings, like Kes, so yes, I'm naming my just so, like. That's my husband, by the way, but go ahead. That's fine, you, you can tell your husband. <laughs> and you know what? Look, I love his music, and I, I love Kes's is it. Yes, you know? I'm, we have a wedding invitation. Like, see, that's, 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 that's what we got out of. So, what I go. Oh, okay. So, um, voice cast, and your voice cast, or groovy. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm so, gonna, you prefer groovy versus. So, here's, 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 here's the thing. But you teach a fitness class, and we see you. You got a lot of energy. I love to enjoy my wine in the moment. That's really a thing. And I really do love Patrice as a. Patrice Roberts. Patrice Roberts. Um. I mean, Alex and Hines' staying power is amazing. I'm really about to name, like, the whole school Cal. It's very hard for me to pick people, right? Um, Bungie's lyrical prowess. Amazing. Like, yes, I paused. Did you see, did you see it? Did Bungie you, did you Garland. See? Everybody check him out. Like, I mean, the range on Mr. Alvarez. I have been a fan off since. the top of his head. Like, just, in, bruh. And so his music, and he does a lot with, with the rhythm and the production. Be like, have a tamanga. <laughs> what? Like, okay, so you see what I'm saying? Like, so yes. I mean, the, um, And also, extremely musically talented is Marshall Hughes. It's uncomparable because, again, another wide range and his ability to engage the audience. So I'm thinking about these performers and naming about what about them makes them. Mm-hmm. And we performed with Marshall Light So I just feel like I understand. <laughs> Why don't you call me? Call me. Call me. Hello? Hello? Okay. Sorry. You gotta put the plug in. No, you do. But yeah, no, those that I think that's that rounds up my top. So moving forward, mm-hmm. where would you like to what would be your vision as far as where you would like to see Carnival and just the Caribbean culture as a whole going? I want us to get to a place where we don't have to consistently explain. You know how you, they say work so hard, you don't have to introduce yourself? Yes. Like, I don't want to rationalize Carnival. I don't want, I don't want to have to fight with you about the slut shaming. I don't want to have to um, make, validate my actions, my activity, my love, my financial investment and my time spent on my culture to you. Right. And it, it people like if you think about what people spend on an all star weekend mm-hmm. or a football game or, you know, the Super Bowl, it's a once in a lifetime experience. It is your courtside seats. I keep using sports because I'm, I'm going like from the entertainment perspective. But I want I want that many people to understand this tradition in that way. Right. Because what, what, what if you if you tell like, let's, let's go with football. Mm-hmm. Right? It's the American pastime. This is the once in a life. This is the greatest of the greatest to ever do it. But yes, we're doing that together. And we have united millions of people in this production. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't have to tell you why it's that important to me. You just look, that's important to her and that's okay. And there's enough valid information out there for people to grasp it. True. Right? Because I, I can't fault those who don't understand because the information is not provided. So it's the onus is on us. Right? Mm-hmm. To say, this is what this is. Because if we don't, who's going to do it for us? Like I keep saying, like, if we don't tell our stories, we're leaving it for other people to write. Exactly. And 
I, I just want I just want us to be at that place. And with us being in that place, then we can be like, well, this is ours. This is what you're trying to engage with. Well, this is what it's gonna. This is what's gonna cost you because we can't elevate without resources. Like that's that's just it. And that there's so much of like people. It, it's hard. Like carnival used to be. If you think about the way. A lot of these smaller, excuse me, I'm not going to say smaller. No, sometimes it's physically small. I'll go with smaller. Smaller island carnivals and um, different, like, the non-traditional. Like, this is a soak in Japan. Yes. Right? You know what that's great for? That is great for keeping the music going. It's getting an exposure. It's giving these artists more than... Because, like, being an artist is hard. In, like... I'm not an expert, but based on my understanding, you're getting most of your money off of shows. Mm -hmm. So if the season is this short, that's all they got, right? And so it's like this this weird push and pull of I'm trying to make it and I got to make the right songs. I, I, God bless all the musicians because, like, we wouldn't be a carnival. Like I said, the progression of the music is what's got to hear. Uh, but I, I do think there is something about the community that needs to be harvested to push people to this new level of understanding so that we can get the level of respect that it deserves. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where this week, like, I'm going to call. Oh, yeah, I get it. Go ahead. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, Shamika, we want to thank you again for taking the time to sit with Fat Finders and sharing your experiences as well as your wisdom about the Caribbean culture. So what's the best way for folks to find out more about Soka Tribe, get involved, support, Definitely want to send everyone to SokaTribe.com. That's S-O-K-A-T-R-I-B-E.com. You can also follow us on all social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram. Join our group on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. When you are ready, actually before you're ready, as a matter of fact, right now, I need you to go to SokaTribe.life and sign up to come with us the Trinidad Carnival. Because once the spots are gone, they're gone. And we take care of all the things. So you have an all-inclusive package. You essentially pay for your flight, you pay us, and you have an amazing experience. It's kind of like magic because we are doing all the behind-the-scenes work for you. Um, I'm really excited to be still here in D.C. So check us out on U Street. That's 905 U Street. Every Saturday we'll be adding a new class soon. But since you're already on the website, you'll see that. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to slide into our DMs or shoot us an email at info at silkatribe.com. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Fet Finders, see all y'all on your road. And of course, stay tuned for our next Fet Finder Focus upcoming weeks. And enjoy the rest of FetFinders.com. Thank you. <laughs>